Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitali, and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, before we officially kiss summer goodbye, I want to share with you my deep dish tomato pie recipe. Now, a couple weeks ago, I made this for Joe and I, and we had some friends over, um, and I posted a picture on Instagram, and I hit hundreds of people asking for the recipe. Tons of you wanted to know how to make it because it is really basic, but if you see the picture, you could just see the gorgeous crust, that unbelievably beautiful red tomato topping is just incredibly good and it's so easy and it's particularly delicious when you've got those juicy little grape tomatoes uh, right in the middle or at this point the end of summer um, that you can get your hands on it's just it is such a simple recipe but by using the best ingredients you can get your hands on makes for an exceptional recipe in my opinion now I'm gonna start off with some pizza dough. You can use store-bought pizza dough. This is a one pound ball of pizza dough. Now what you can do is you can make my pizza dough, which my recipe for makes two wound one pound balls of pizza dough. Um, so you can half the recipe if you want to, or you can make the whole thing and then just put the other half into the freezer. Or you can go to your local pizza shop and if you're chummy chummy with them, by a dollar fifty, they'll, they'll charge you about a dollar fifty to buy a ball of pizza dough, um, which is Know, comes in handy sometimes. Now what I've got here, I'm just trying to shake off as much of the flour as I possibly can from the plate because I don't want this to have hardly any flour at the very bottom. And the top is nice and sticky how I want it. I've got about a 12 inch, um, this is a round pan. I got this from Italy last year, actually when I went that, there last time, so a few months ago. I don't know um, what the name of this particular one is because there's no name on it but it's made in Italy and this is what my Nona uses to make her deep dish pan pizzas or any kind of pizza but any pizza pan that you like that's deep dish like similar to a Sicilian pan um, get that but round. This is about a 12 inch like maybe it, I measured it it's like right under 12 inches like 11 and 3 quarters and I have oiled it really well on the bottom and the sides with some olive oil and now what I'm doing is I am stretching out my pizza dough with my hands because I want this to just cover, I want to stretch it out enough so that it covers the surface of my pan, but I'm not going to stretch it out to like go up the sides or anything, but that's because that's all going to happen when it bakes and as it rises. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop any extra air bubbles and I want to brush the top with a little bit of olive oil and then what I'm going to do is you're going to let this set, oops, my little mixer, my little thing, they want to be on there. You're going to add about a tablespoon on the top, brush it really nicely to get that gorgeous crust once it bakes. Then I'm going to cover this with plastic wrap and leave it somewhere warm to rise for about an hour. And I'll show you what that looks like when it's there. And don't worry if it's not perfectly spread out because trust me, the magic of rising and the magic of baking is going to make this work beautifully. So I'm going to wrap this up, keep it somewhere warm, and then we'll carry on. My dough has been rising for about an hour and it is looking exactly how I want it to. And now I just take my fingers and just kind of like, I guess spread it out a little bit because now it's nice and soft. It's just going to be fantastic. I have my oven preheating to 450 and now what you'll need for the topping, there's not very many but they're just all the right ones. I've got some grape tomatoes here that I, some are quartered, some have been halved depending on the size and then some fresh garlic that I've sliced. I've got some passata here, you can use any tomato puree you prefer as long as it's seedless dried oregano, crucial for this recipe, a little more olive oil and some salt and that is it. Now this has no cheese, uh, traditional tomato pie, the way I'm used to eating it and the way we used to make it at the oven's painted, the way we used to make it at my dad's pizza place, um, no cheese whatsoever. It was just really intensely like sweet from the tomatoes and that's why it's really best when you make it in the middle of summer or whenever tomatoes are just like in the peak of their season. So that's why I couldn't resist making this now because I do have some great tomatoes uh, on hand so I wanted to share it with you. Um, and really it's just it's hard to even describe what this is unless you've ever had it before. It's not like a cheesy, ooey gooey, thin crust pizza, but it's also not a thick crust, cheesy pizza. It's kind of like, it's its own thing, but it's really good. So I'm just going to dress my tomatoes really quickly with some salt, and it's really important that you season in every layer really well. And it's important that you add salt to the cherry tomatoes and a little bit of olive oil, about a tablespoon or so. And now what I'm going to do 
just briefly give those a mix because I'm just going to top this with my hands anyway and move right over here. Now I'm going to take my passata, which again is just seedless tomato puree. You want to make sure it's seedless because seeds tend to make tomato mixture kind of um, bitter. So I don't want any bitterness here. I want nice and sweet sauce and just take a spatula or you take a, a ladle, the back of a ladle and just kind of smear it out. You don't want to add so much sauce that it becomes soggy. You just want to add enough so that it kind of um, like adheres to the crust really well and the topping is almost like a, like a bruschetta topping if that makes more sense. And then I just want to hit this with a tiny bit of salt and now I'm going to go in and top it with my tomato mixture which just smells fantastic. You can add as much or as little garlic as you like but I will say this, in this instant, no onions, no peppers. I mean you can add them if you want to but I'm going by how my nonna makes her tomato pie and how I'm used to eating it. So to me, this is just pretty much perfection and um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Am I right or am I right? And then a really healthy pinch of oregano. That's what gives you that like distinctive tomato, like tomato pie taste in my opinion. So a good pinch and I'm kind of just like crunching it in between my fingers to really release the natural oils from the dried oregano and now I'm going to pop this into my oven for about 20 to 25 minutes or until the sides have gotten a beautiful golden brown color and I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. My pizza looks incredible, look at that. Listen to that crust. Now let me give you a heads up, more of like a tip. I, to be honest with you, don't really know what kind of pan this is, but it makes for incredible crusty anythings. It gives you everything a really great crust. If you don't have a pan like this, what you can do is you can bake this in a regular like springform pan and then you can take it out a few minutes early and pop it onto a pizza stone. That way the bottom gets really nice and crispy because if you make this in a springform pan, which I've tried, it doesn't give you a crispy crust at all. So use use it to cook it pretty much all the way and then to crisp up the bottom and yeah just pop it onto a pizza stone that's been preheating in the oven. Now I've just sprinkled a little bit of fresh basil on top and I'm just gonna go ahead, oh that crunchiness, I mean I know. It smells like when I was a little girl I used to go to school in Italy up until I moved here and um, the school I went to had sometimes like after school programs but it, it let out around 2 o'clock so we would be really hungry so bef when we were taking the bus before we would go on the bus we would stop at a little um, like a little bakery I suppose you can call it and what I would get to hold me over until I got home to eat lunch was a piece of tomato pie and, and they sold it in a square shape um, but this is essentially exactly the same thing and I mean it's just I don't even know what to do with myself because this is just looking look at that I'm throwing some of the topping off of it but I just want you to see how beautiful that can you see underneath of it it's such a beautiful golden brown it's just fluffy it's just oh good hot very hot but one of the best if not my all-time favorite pizza and I love pizza any way shape or form I do love my pepperoni Sicilian oh it's just really hard why do I have to choose I'm not going to this is one of my favorite all-time pizzas it's just really reminds me of my nonna and it really reminds me of my childhood pizza that I used to eat like for an after-school snack it's just it's phenomenal if you love a deep dish pizza try this one it really is such a basic recipe but I promise you that all together it's like a match made in food heaven. LaraInTheKitchen.com will have everything written down, broken down for you, waiting for you. Hope you enjoyed spending time with me and I will see you next time. Bye!